What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you five mistakes for junior developers at work. So I just wanted to compile a quick little list of things that I noticed in my time as a junior since I've now I've been promoted to a software developer one. I no longer have the junior title, you know what I mean? I just want to share some of the things that I found that are probably helpful to avoid or at least be aware of when you first begin your career as a junior developer. The first thing is don't do things without asking questions first. And even if you think you have the answer, double check that your answer is correct, get clarity. And if you're even a little bit not sure or unclear on something, just ask anyway whether it's your senior developer, another developer who's closer in experience with you. I don't care if it's a scrum master, a business analyst. I don't care if it's a QA, like, I don't care if it's a dev on another team. Like, just ask ask your questions or, or get to the person who can at least make something make sense for you, somebody who explains things in a way that you understand it super important because if you make assumptions you'll end up making mistakes and those mistakes can just make your reputation look even worse as a junior developer already you want to you want to have a reputation of you know double checking and being you know super accountable and you know always being you know knowledgeable about what you're talking about or competent you know you don't want to be that person who's just assuming things and just pushing buttons and blowing stuff up all the time so um always ask questions not asking questions is is a huge mistake for anybody who's just beginning their career as a developer because uh you're, you're definitely gonna have questions the next thing i would say look out for or try to avoid as a new developer is not creating backup files so in my case when i write a lot of sql queries especially for like specific things that i'm gonna have to go back and double check or like find something or run a report I always try to save that file as a backup even if i'm gonna you know only use it one time or i think it might not be useful you know going forward again i still create a backup file just because you never know if something might go wrong and you have to kind of retrace your steps and go back and see what you did or what tables and databases you were querying so like you definitely want to just create backups if it relates to you and your job title whatever you're doing um again i do a lot of xml at work so we have a bunch of like xml files that we make changes to and things like that so we have the ones that we actually you know push to production and then we have the ones that we work on so not only do i have the ones that i work on but i have a copy of the ones that we work on that i just work on when i'm adding things to it so that if i do anything wrong on that file it doesn't affect the ones that our team works on so just little things like that, you know, uh, that one might not be for everybody depending on what you guys do, but at least for me, it's been incredibly helpful and just like always knowing that if anything goes wrong, I have a backup file somewhere. So creating backup files is a huge thing that you should do. The third thing is not taking notes or just having your own personal, like, like things that help you out. So that looks different for everybody you know for some people it could be a word document like a little cheat sheet for other people it could be just a straight up text file in notepad for other people it could be like a google doc i mean who knows there's endless ways that you guys can do this there's no real set way of doing it but i think that you know as you go along and you you get taught things by other people on your team or your senior developer or as you just learn things that you know you're gonna have to know whether it's company wise or your code base specifically i think having like your own stash of notes that are only for you they're not meant to be shared or anything like that but just things that might be little quirks with your code base that you know you might you know you could easily forget it if you have to go do a certain process if you know that you know you have to just make certain little changes or little tweaks or something or change certain file names or upload something a certain way or just like depending on whatever it is um you know just just have your own set of notes and take down information especially what like i said whatever the more experienced people on your team are telling you take notes just so that you know you have a reference point before you have to ask somebody a question so you're not always just over somebody's shoulder asking a bunch of questions all the time and it can also kind of get repetitive in your mind too like certain processes that you need to know to be effective like on your team you definitely are going to want to have 
the ins and outs kind of down packed of whatever your team has to go through and i'm sure every team has their own little quirks but like i said just having your own little notes that you keep somewhere anywhere for yourself will just help make your job a lot easier i think and especially under like high pressure situations so next mistake that you want to try to avoid is asking a senior developer everything all right so that's something that you know i think depending on the type of person your senior developer is if they're a really helpful person and they really enjoy coding and they're really passionate about it which likely they will be but whether or not they're a people person is another thing so if you're always over their shoulder and they have all this work as a senior developer that they have to do and they also probably have a responsibility of mentoring a lot of other developers on the floor on different teams and if you're always asking them questions and you're not getting your own solutions doing your own research or trying your own attempts at just learning and possibly even breaking things in the sake of learning i mean it's it could get really annoying and you can become very burden a burden you can become a big burden for them and they might not want to help you or they just might not enjoy working with you and that can just affect team chemistry and just you just don't want that you don't want bad team chemistry so I'm not saying don't ask your senior developer questions. I mean, on the contrary, I think you should because they know a lot more than you do and they've, they've done this a lot longer than you. And if you have a good like personal relationship with them, then the more you can learn from them and just soak up all that knowledge. And I think it can help you grow exponentially by just shadowing them or just watching them work and learning from them. But what I'm saying is just don't become a burden. Just don't constantly ask them questions without trying your own stuff. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to just get out there and learn on your own and then go to them as a very, very last resort. The last thing that I think all junior devs should really try to avoid doing as much as possible is not testing your code before you merge it. So this is huge because number one, you don't wanna be the person responsible for breaking everything, especially if you're on a tight deadline you know i work for a mortgage company so a lot of things that we do have to fall in line with state regulations which go into effect on certain dates so that means that our code has to all be accounted for and out into production by certain dates so that we stay compliant and don't cost our company millions of dollars in uh, fees and penalties and things like that so things being time sensitive like that you don't want to be responsible for causing a huge break fix which means that some code made it past the QA testing and made it through all the environments and somehow made it into production and then broke production when it got there. And that's called a break fix and it looks really, really bad on your whole team. Number one, on you because you're the developer, you're the person that wrote the code that made this happen. Um, you obviously didn't test your code very well. You didn't write good test cases for it or you just didn't double check your test cases. And then your QA on your team obviously didn't do his testing very well if the code, uh, you know, made it past, you know, his his testing and, you know, without being caught and things like that. And it just looks really bad on your whole team. You know, it looks like you guys fail as a team when you promote a, a break fix into production. So you don't want to do that. So you really want to just make sure that you're diligent and that you have integrity about the code that you write. Be proud of what you're producing, what you're putting into production and write those test cases. It might not be the most fun thing to do, but it's a very transferable skill that will help you going into another job in the future. You can never have too much experience doing testing. So just test your code, you know, make sure that everything is good in your own environment before you try to merge in and do anything with any other developer. Make sure everything is good on your computer first. And make sure your test cases are good because you don't want to be responsible for making your team look bad or your QAs or just anything like that, guys. So there's something to be aware of. Those are like my little five things that I think all junior developers should try to avoid doing early on in their career. So let me know if you guys like this. You know, uh, leave me some comments down below, guys. Leave me a like, share, subscribe, you know, thumbs up. It really just keeps me motivated to make videos for you guys. And let me know what you want to hear or learn or whatever. Like, let me know what I can do for you guys to just, you know, I guess keep keep you guys inspired on this journey. You know, as you become a software developer, you know, I'm trying to just keep sharing my journey with you guys along the way, you know, showing you exactly where I've come from. Starting all the way back from boot camp, guys, all the way to where we are today, six months in as a software developer one. So, yeah, guys, those are just some of my tips. I hope you enjoyed it. 
uh if you're a developer which most of you guys probably are make sure you check out the freebie section down below the description or give away free stuff for you guys and uh again this is darian with darian the dev and i'll check you guys out in the next video all right peace